to conventions. So I've hit start. We don't need to stand by okay. convention. Why do oh. we need to stand oh my by convention? God. Louis talking nonsense. So best we get. Look, Louis the Beardless is talking nonsense. Hello, dear viewer. <laughs> we're, we're here before you are. Tell us, Louis, what was the nonsense you were, you okay. were speaking so of? So the campaign against drones has taken a new turn now uh, on the Portuguese news. It was drones are a danger because they drop things on the, on the prisons. So there's a guy speaking, oh, it's very bad. And they showed an image of something that was captured to a prisoner, which was a, a phantom battery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is news, really. They've been doing this for the past couple of years. This is not new. This has been going on ever since the first viable drones were out there, ever since the Phantom 1. Yeah, but can you imagine a cap uh, uh, the, the guards apprehending to a prisoner a Phantom battery? Well, who knows? But he or Will she wants, try, wants to go flying. Try, so. try smuggling that in your back passage. Much easier to drop it from a drone. <laughs> <laughs> but but we haven't got a back passage here. We've got a veranda, so you can so you couldn't Actually, smuggle it. Actually, if you've uh, that was part of an escape plan. If you've watched MythBusters, they had an episode where they tried to. Um, Corrode prison bars with uh, salsa sauce and right. uh, yes. sparks, like a power source of some sort. So perhaps the phantom uh, battery uh, was uh, the power funny. source. Because a couple of weeks ago, here in Portugal, uh, there was a live on Facebook transmission of a party of the prisoners inside a prison. <laughs> Well, then that's, uh, that's why they need to have the batteries for their phantoms so they can yeah. their phantoms. And Louis wasn't invited. Uh, oh, well, I wasn't invited <laughs> yet because we, we'll go there. Yeah. We'll just not forget. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eventually, we'll, we'll end up there with the murderers and the rapists because we're so what? dangerous. What? Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's happening? What, I didn't get that memo. We're all going to prison. What's going what? on? Indeed, yeah. Have you yeah. seen the uh, last week episode? Uh, it was Bruce that suggested that that he does not go going to to comply with any drone laws, so he's going to prison and defend himself uh, in front of a, a judge. So let's go. Listen, I've already placed my soap on a rope. I'm all prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, that the, the 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 prison delivery thing is is. The most successful, and I don't know why it's not being touted more because people want their drone deliveries, and um, those people are getting their drone deliveries. So it is the most successful drone delivery outfit to date all around the world. Yeah, but I always, they also <laughs> show the clip from UK where you can see a drone uh, with something hanging with a ball and uh, parking nearby the wall of a prison, and then you can see through the the the, the the cell uh, a harm coming wow. picking up the rope and the package uh, beneath the rope and dropping and the drone flew away so but uh, what, think, uh... what, what got my attention was one we've had the the government trying to pass a new law a couple of weeks ago that was rejected by the parliament and now this new comeback of drones are a danger and uh, uh, all the prisoners get what they want but come on when you see the images of apprehensions to prisoners of cell phones uh, right. and you get that scandal of the facebook live from this straight from the prison of a party come on a birthday party streamed live on facebook inside a, 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 a jail uh -huh. It's a pity Ian's not here. He's he's suffering from a red off the red nose reindeer nose syndrome, apparently, according to messages he sent me. But he had great facts about uh, the, uh, the, the the how stuff was got into prison in the UK, and I think we had a quiz in we a wee while ago. But um, yeah, drones is, is is the least the least of their worries. Um, the one I 
personally like uh, and i've mentioned it before i know is using arrows they tape cell phones arrows and then fire them over the I wall they so show just them. imagine catching oh, that so, no, these, you know, all the prisoners are standing around with apples on their heads <laughs> there you go uh, for for those that didn't knew the 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 news uh, on tv now showed how it's done so you get one of those loaves of uh, bread and get it inside those clots to, to clean up the uh, dishes also with the phone inside so there are lots of ways some of them quite ingenious to get phone, uh, mobile phones inside jails mm. and and it, uh, and and really it's quite easy for them to sort of put some sort of rf inducing ring of steel i've, I've got to try and um sex it up really but you know knock out the rf rf jam that the, the cell phones the crim they're, they're not that good and within the walls and uh, robert's your father's on. brother no need to smuggle them in but why would you do that then the the, the guards themselves won't get their their cell phones working exactly Come on. They, they won't be able to stay on facebook and all that sort of a thing yeah no but that, there's other ways isn't there it seems seems ridiculous to to worry about it that much it doesn't seem to be it must be a big thing down here it must be a big thing but actually no it doesn't need to be a big thing down here because uh, you can already pay um it's quite common knowledge that you just pay a guard to have food in and stuff like that you know you can pay to have whatever you want there so so it's probably no no business at all to be had in drone deliveries to prisons in south africa so actually actually they don't deliver just cell phones they also deliver drugs and uh, other okay. <laughs> so, drugs yeah. are so, so 1990s. Come on. Uh, this is the, the technology. The technology is what, what is worth. Uh, Al Capone will be happy to get all these uh, technological means to control his businesses uh, on these days. Did we see the drug launcher that will get a bit political, but you say technology comes to it, that, they, that, they, that the people had hung on the wall <laughs> between Mexico and the USA. It was a big catapult, and it was using the wall. <laughs> this is the place to leave them from. Wetwing! <laughs> we get the drugs. So, you know, technology didn't have to be too smart, does it? No, uh, technology, come on, uh, Amazon should should learn a thing or two about these methods. So I don't know why. <laughs> about they, drone deliveries. They so should put ob observers around the prisons uh, to take notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yes, it's... Uh, but I know there's been plenty of prosecutions in the UK. Uh, oh, look, here's our, here's our proper time. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you might be in the world. Here we are. We started early. We started without you. Uh, we're just talking nonsense. But then <laughs> nothing's going to change, is it, in the next little while? It'll all be the same. It'll all be the same. I'm going to go for... What was it? I've even forgotten the... Um, the topics I was going to, we were going to talk about. Oh, I know, um, Airbus uh, inaugurating or, or, or signing up its Urban Air Mobility Center and signing more dotted lines with Shenzhen in China. I thought that was very interesting that they're choosing to 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 put it all there, um, straight to the heart. Uh, and I was by drone said, did you get me an email regarding multiple drone shootings in Australia, not just Canberra? I don't know if I did. Did you see that email, Bruce? No, but I know there has been. Um, and not someone else was chip searching for a dog. I know someone was searching for a dog with their drone that got shot down. And there was one yeah. other one that was the LiDAR one got shot down. So, yeah, it's becoming a pastime. It's becoming the new hobby, um, drone hunting. Yeah, That's but good. the guy the guy that was uh, that shot down the... Um, the drone that was looking for a dog uh, didn't have a good, a good, a good uh, shoot because he, he apparently shot three. Uh, he, he shot three times with a shotgun to to get the drone down. So come on, <laughs> get your aim together, please. I, I think there was a third one too. I seem to recall um, that they found someone had um, had another shot. So yeah, it is becoming very popular. It's a great pastime. You know, I think everyone should have a go. Yes, uh, and Osbo Drone saying ATSB says they will not investigate or take any action because it is not a safety issue. That's ridiculous. What if it falls on someone's head? And that's horizontal <laughs> shoot. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, you can't just fire. Well, 
because because if, if if you miss the pellets or the rounds are going to land somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. But we exactly. we should learn from this. Obviously, falling drones are not a safety issue, so it is now safe to fly over built-up areas and crowds of people. It's been said. And and as a bullet, so not only can we allow that to happen, but we can go out and just fire at random <laughs> across a city. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. No, I, I was by drone. I'm going to you. You're going to have to. Casa said they won't take any action because local law enforcement will look after criminal issues. Oh, okay. So no charges laid under the Aviation Act. So yeah, all right, fair enough. Then obviously there's there's stuff that um, that but will sort why resolve not lay a that. Charge? But why won't they lay a charge? I mean, the guy should be done twice. I mean, if this, he's broken two two laws, why doesn't he get pinged twice? I mean, if you if you drive dangerously and you, you speed, you get charged with dangerous driving and speeding. So surely you should be charged under every possible avenue because one of the prosecutions may fail for whatever reason. If CASA is paid to do a job, they're not doing it. I'd be complaining. And Osborne Jones says 100% agree, Bruce. Yeah, yes. Just strike me as very strange. You can't... <laughs> you... Come on, guys. We are missing, we are missing something fundamental. It's oh, yeah? the Suez News soapbox. Uh, Where uh, is the drone of Nikolai? It's our, it's our own soapbox. Come on. Well, according to somebody on uh, that commented today on my uh, YouTube channel, let me get that. Have they seen that? Um, hold on, hold on. It's Daniel Garrow. According to him, he can see my plane at, at the fifth and a half minutes into the clip. Let me just find where that comment was. Um, haven't really checked it out yet. But let me see if I can open it up and see what's what's around there. Nikolai, so I'll five... have to teach you some TensorFlow, some AI, and some blockchaining to train the, the, the video to, to detect your plane. Uh, in Australia, they're using blockchain. No, no, we'll have to do. You'll have to lose about one thousand planes so that we can train the Just AI train model. Three fifty-three. Hold on, three fifty-three. So three fifty-three is. Hmm. You know, you can use the comma and the full stop to go forward and back a frame in YouTube, eh? Can you? Uh, yeah. Hang on. Not frames. I'm looking at no, it's the. Not, uh, it's not working. I'm <laughs> looking at non-compressed uh, footage on my laptop, and because YouTube does tend to ruin. Uh, Just download the video. In further news, we painted some wall, a wall earlier, and I am watching it dry. I am watching the wall dry right now. <laughs> and the grass has stopped growing outside. It's too cold. Uh, we we are having unseasonable Actually, this time of year. It, it's getting a bit warmer around here. Uh, and Osby Jones says that drones being shot out of the sky doesn't suit the narrative that drones are bad. No, it doesn't, does it? Um, but yeah, people with guns firing. I can, out I can see the headline: near catastrophe as drone collides with bullet. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> drone that uh, blue fire, blue flyer, and Bobo are good or boo boo. Hello, 21 degrees here today in London. Yes, my eldest is in the UK uh, now, and I've been informed, reliably informed, that it is indeed warm. It was 30 today, and we should be going into uh, well, we should be going into autumn. We should be, uh, you know, about five, five ten degrees, degrees this morning. Uh, degrees. That's hot here. Uh, and, and what's the outcome of this looking at me nose with your coffee cup and looking at some video clip there, <laughs> Nicola? <laughs> what? It's well, a it's... lump of snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of snow. He says he's uh, zoomed in on the frame, but uh, I see nothing. I'm going to have to go into Premiere and take out a couple of... Uh, frames out of this and inspect them real close oh you should just have like Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes then for a moment for those who are old enough yeah. to remember that 
Hogan's Heroes. My word. Uh, my grandfather told me about that. But they, um, they, uh, you, you should have just taken a mapping camera. That's what you should have done. But let, uh, let's just wander back slightly. Come to on. Actually, your... hold on. Hold on. Actually, the clouds has undergone a few changes since last week. Um, I did change the motors and put 12 inch props on it, 12 by 10 to be precise, because that's what I had lying around. And I did put the 510 kV motors from the MyFly Dream Nimbus, the, the first one, um, because I really want to verify Nathan's uh, results that that combination, that motor with a larger prop is that efficient. It should yield a difference at the very least, because I'm dropping like, what, 70, 70 kV, and I'm going up two inches, and the uh, pitch is going up three inches. So, theoretically, not quite 12 by 12, but theoretically should be more efficient, and I'm also going to rework the video system so the plane doesn't interfere or block the uh, transmitter antenna at any point. How, yeah. how are you going to do that? So it's got to block it. So, well, you're going to hang it underneath well, it like a thousand take, foot wire or something. Take off, you've got the antenna like this, and shortly after takeoff, it comes like this uh, okay. below the plane. So it's going to, going to hang below. That yeah. just looks like a problem with too much drink for, to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was some, there's blue tablets for that, I believe. Or so Bruce told me. Uh, yeah. it, um, also, I'm going to put a video switch so I can actually have a look from the HD camera on the gimbal and point it better. Although right about now, a 90-degree lens would be so useful. But you, would, you, would, you, wouldn't want that system, so you wouldn't want that antenna system to fail at distance, so you certainly had a massive polarization problem. Well, I'm sure Bruce can think of other things you wouldn't want to happen to it. No, he can't. No. I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because you're only going to be having a quarter wave whip or something like that, aren't you? Or are you going to swing a dipole down? No. A dip Come on. Get real. Okay. A pagoda. Jesus. <laughs> I don't have the biggest... The biggest problem with pagodas is, is the big null off the top and bottom. That's where you lose most of your signals. Rather than being shielded, it's the null point. So if that aligns well, with your receiver, you, you lose a snot load of signal. All kilometers away, so really that is a non-issue. I rarely fly high right above my head. I'm usually, well, you know, I'm chasing in a, clouds. In a banked turn, in a banked turn the, the antenna can end up facing quite a way towards you. That is true, but at 14 kilometers, I've limited my banking angles to about 25 degrees. And at 14 kilometers, it doesn't bank quite that much to uh, go into that no zone. Also, that far out, I usually bank like five degrees. It takes probably a kilometer to make a U-turn. So really try not to, <laughs> not to shake the plane to too much. Away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yes, this is apparently Mad RC. Hello, Mad RC has nice hair link info, so that would also be interesting as well. But you've got to, um, well, what, well, Bruce, well, what is the best polarization then for the best all rounder polarization in well, your well, opinion? All round, circularly polarized gives you a more consistent signal all round, but for maximum distance, yeah. actually, um, the maximum linear polarization distance, offers yeah. benefits, yeah. Uh -huh. Linear, recent email. Okay, well, I'll have a look at the email. Yeah, but I don't have I don't have a big enough linear antenna for the ground to um, outrun the uh, triple feed array because that thing is absolutely awesome, and it's pretty compact, giving its uh, uh, like dB rating, if that can be believed. I actually got. I'm waiting on a triple feed array from Gep RC. Triple because feed array. What does that mean? That is the it's it's from the same guy that made the pagoda, Martin uh, Martin something, uh, and he designed the triple feed 
patch antenna, which is a smaller version, okay. and the array is like it's like 150 millimeter circle. It's huge. It's huge compared to the regular one, but it's bloody good. And uh, my the best antenna I've used so far is the Gap RC Pagoda. There's only one model of it, and at least the unit I had was absolutely awesome, and it went down with the crosswind. So now I got. I'm waiting on two more of these, hoping they're the same. And I also got their triple feed array. And I'm going to compare it with the one I have here just to see, just in case they were not made in the same factory. <laughs> you know, curious like that. I want to see what's the difference between two of the same antennas made possibly um, different places, see which one would be better. But I really like that Pagoda. I mean, the Gep RC one, I've had, other pagodas, I've had other antennas, <laughs> different antennas. That thing made a clear difference when I put it on the plane. And Blue Fire is saying, um, Menace RC pagodas are fantastic. But have you tried those yet? Which ones? Uh, Menace yeah. RC. No. And just just unpack that. I don't understand what that means by triple feed with pagodas. Please, please explain slowly. No, me. that's that's just the 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 ground side antenna. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got three oh. pagoda antennas. So no, it's one <laughs> with three feeds. I don't understand. I don't understand. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on the back of it. You have two connectors. One you put uh, these uh, like uh, artificial, ter yeah, terminators. You you can you can choose whether it be a left uh, hand polarized or right hand polarized, and that's in the same antenna. You have to right. terminate okay. one okay. one connector, and you use the other one. And then, if you want, you can switch them around. I use right hand polarized, so I use that connector, and I terminate the other one. It's but it's just a huge piece of PCB with something printed on it. And then so what you, we're, we're really talking about is three antennas in one box. Um, well, it's triple feed. No idea why it's called a triple feed, really. I'm not that into <laughs> the technicalities of antennas. Perhaps Bruce can be of uh, assistance here <laughs> to explain that if he, ha if he has an idea. I've, I've got no idea. No, it's just the way that the, the <laughs> patches actually fed to produce circular polarization. But yeah, they, they have a huge capture area, so they have, have a whole lot of gain. And they are um, reasonably compact. I still like my helicals, though. I, I still have as much range as I want with those. So, um, but the only downside of that particular patch antenna is that at some angles it reverses its polarization. So you will get it's not particularly suited for flying in areas where you're going to get a lot of reflections because sometimes you get a stronger reflection than primary signal because if the reflection comes in at the wrong angle, it's it's received as if it was at the right angle. It, it, Martin does a very good um, explanation of that and shows the radiation map and the polarization change. So around the peripheral of the, the patch, you end up getting, if you're set for right-hand polarization, it actually picks up left-hand better around the edge than right-hand. So it's, it's but it's for, for long-range stuff, it's perfect. And then we're talking about 5.8 gigs here. Especially if you have a tracker. Yeah, yeah. but we're, we're talking 5.8, I, I assume. Yeah. Actually, uh, looking at how big this is uh, on 5.8, I really can't imagine what that size would be for a 1.2 gigahertz system. That would be like something like this. Yeah, but, Actually, I'm, but, with my balloon project, oh, with the balloon oh. project, I'm going to I'm going to use a satellite dish for my balloon tracker. You know, for actually receiving the signal. Yeah, hang on. I'm, just, I'm just writing your hashtag for that. It's hashtag <laughs> back from the dead. Um, yes, waiting for a calm day. <laughs> calm day. We so we you, calm days. It's been terrible. So you're uh, you're 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 also doing 5.8 with a. Well, you're just putting your gear up and where the LMB should be. And uh, yeah, you just have a. Uh, Left-hand circularly polarized antenna where the LMB should be, and that picks up a right-hand polarized signal because it gets reflected, so it changes polarization. So, so you're going to use a left-hand antenna to pick up a right-hand signal, and then basically um, just point it in the direction and move it till you get the strongest signal. And 
Uh, okay. Well, uh, we look forward to that sometime in 2020, perhaps, because this project's been... You're optimistic? The Gee. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. So Airbus, we didn't really talk much about Airbus uh, and their, their move to China setting up there. I thought that was very interesting. Is it another publicity campaign like the previous ones of those crazy designs and all that? No, it's their innovation center is actually going to be in Shenzhen. <laughs> and they've signed the deal with the council. Um, and it's just, they'll be sat right on top of where all the bits are made, aren't they? This was very interesting uh, for the for the American urban air mobility crowd and EV tolls and all that sort of thing. And I really do want to, 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 to ask questions of you guys in a minute. So that's does, that. Let's does, that that. Mean, does that mean we'll be able to buy those old A380s on Banggood now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I believe it's on yeah. AliExpress. It's on <laughs> AliExpress. <laughs> well, there's already a bit of a rush to buy them, isn't there? People are wanting to turn them into all sorts of other things. They're not, uh, you know, car cargo use and things like that. So they're not, not quite as doomed, as people say, but it is quite no, interesting. No, they're not doomed. Uh, problem is, where do they land? Uh, that's yeah. their biggest problem. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And this whole um, the uh, the airport in Durban, new uh, single airport uh, runway in Durban, was built for 2010 football World Cup thing, you know, running around kick ball thing. And they put they put in space for the uh, A380. And the only only people to bring their A380 here is British Airways, and they do their crew training. That's the only Air 380s A380s that have ever been here have been crew training, and they don't I think stop. Someone will turn them into eVTOL urban transport vehicles. Well, that's exactly what Chrissy's admin has said. A380 VTOL conversion. It must be. That's what everybody's doing. Is Why? Exactly uh, would it be a tail sitter? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please return the stewardess to the upright position. Yes, I've heard that before this week. Uh, <laughs> and uh, above and beyond saying the 767 went down in Texas, Amazon Prime cargo plane. Uh, did that make anyone's news? It didn't make our news, but I certainly read the news of that. Yes, um, that's a. If that it was, was an check. unmanned aircraft, people would have not died. And, and uh, Chris uh, Edmund. Chris Edmund. If Amazon buys them, and uh, then they'll have the flock of uh, the drone deliveries uh ejecting like that american uh hercules i believe that dropped the, a bunch of small drones to as a, a swarm so it yes. will be a swarm delivery yes uh so we actually know a few of those people that are on that uh really but anyway <laughs> that's a very a very clever uh people doing that um <clears throat> And yeah, that hit the news. And also, the other thing that hit the news was that Kalashnikov like Russian thing. It was two years ago. Suicide that. drone. And two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, that came out. And suddenly, suddenly, that's on everybody's radar. That really annoys me, that one. Again, it's only a matter of time, Gary. So, only a matter of time. Can, two. Can those, those uh, missiles, uh, those that, uh, oh, come on, oh, what's their name? They have a a curious name those small missiles that do ground terrain following uh can cruise be missiles. Oh, cruise missiles the cruise missiles i don't know anything about those <laughs> no no let's, let's yeah, yeah. They, they can be called uh, a drone yes of course absolutely um, they're a drone they're following a pre-programmed path and do terrain terrain avoid come on they're on top of the technology. They do collision avoidance, uh, we hope, until the last moment. Mm. Mm. Well, they're actually yes, pretty but they, If you want to defend, all you need to block them is a chain. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's here all week. He's here all week. Or what, you tie him on and then he only goes so far, like a dog on a collar, <laughs> you know, until it's, until it's stopped. Then you've got, actually, then if it starts winding around, you've actually gone back to basics and you've got control line. I mean, that's the way to go really in a lot of ways now bruce has made oh, i'm not going to mention that oh chris i popped my high altitude balloon cherry today oh hooray few times well what radio system were you chris has beaten you to it what radio system were you using to track it chris hopefully hopefully uh some rtty i mean who who wouldn't use rtty i bet you use laura he's that sort of a person 
<laughs> he's not. He's he's not going to admit it. Uh, oh yes, the uh, latest from uh, the UK. Yes, Blue Fire mentioning that the Gatwick drone could have been an inside job. Well, Bruce, of course, did a video on that, and that is, that is just ridiculous. That is just we're, we're hopping a skip away from saying there's what? no drone there. What do you reckon? Who's going to take that up? The Gatwick uh, job, the one that started two days before the Gatwick was sold to the French guys. Mm. And and the the airfields at um, NRF twenty four GSM 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 Chris GSM oh dear um, <laughs> that's what is lost. Um, Chris Chris had many regrets. He used remorseful code. Oh, <laughs> oh no! But that is worth making a note. But that is worth making. I've made a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, yeah, that that Gatwick thing is just just absolute nonsense. It's proving to be nonsense. And eyes down for a full house. My bet, if you're a gambling type, is that a report or a more meaningful thing will be released when the uh, No Deal Brexit gigs occurring. <laughs> the whole country will be looking the other way. I reckon that's when the proper proper news will come out about that, and we won't notice it. Oh, uh, Wavy Davey got called by Plod the other day. Confiscated the drone. All oh, bad, though. Gave me my knife, gun, and drugs back. Well, yes, that's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's always going to look on the on the bright side. Yeah, GSMs, it, well, the antennas are, aren't pointing up. They're, they're pointing where the people are on the ground. So that's, that's why, unless you've got a, a, a station many, many miles back that happens to see it. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much why it's almost worthless. Uh, so, yeah, have you got a position fix? And do you know where? You're, and how high did you get? Uh, well, no doubt we've got to wait. I wait the 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 video on iForce Two D's channel. We look forward to it very much. And was it a big enough balloon to stop the wardrobe uh, uh, descending and breaking its wheels? I wonder. Uh, <laughs> all right, what else are we going to say? Any more on the Gatwick? Um, the Gatwick thing. You know, no, but that Dublin one was interesting, wasn't it? Oh yes, 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 yes. And they they started walking with that back, didn't they? Yeah, and I noticed on one of my videos a whole lot of pilots have come along and said we're far too busy to use our phones when we're flying, but they failed to point out uh, have any response to the Dublin one where the guy was merely taxiing and would have had plenty of time, and the fact that no one else anywhere in the airport was able to get a picture either at Gatwick or at Dublin of these alleged drones. Well, and the Gatwick one was a, was a heaving horrible evening. The first evening when it was all supposed to kick off, it was foul, foul weather. And nobody would, nobody in their room, unless you're a nasty person, I suppose, would have been flying. Um, yeah, and the, the, the Dublin one, yeah, where was their traffic? Why couldn't they see? If you could see it taxiing, then they ought to be able to see it with a cup of coffee. Yeah, Drone Girl, do you watch Drone Girl's channel? She's got a YouTube channel. She's in Ireland, and she carried a piece of a radio or TV broadcast about that and and how everyone was jumping to the conclusion it was an evil drone intent on killing people, blah, 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 this whole horrible perception that the public now has. Yeah. Uh, Chris is going to one last point, which is heading to now 150 gram payload. It's live live broadcast from the re a live live tweeting, as it were, from the recovery of this balloon. Uh, well, did you have a camera on that pay payload, I wonder, Chris? We'll wait for his response to comments. <laughs> what sort of ignition system for the, the return to Earth? Gravity. Return to Earth always works. Now they're all bad, shoot them down. Well, yes, so it would seem. Um, just shoot and shoot and shoot. I see a market. Drone bullets. It's too late. It's already there. And, yeah, uh, yeah they... they the 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 nets and the uh, and the um, the bullet thing the bullet net things were roundly uh, shot down in the UK because you need to have a firearms license to be able to use them. Dash cams should be mandatory on all GA aircraft. The cost of regular dash cam is seven hundred pounds. No excuse for them not to be placed in many locations, pointing in all directions on a large airline. And that is exactly the. Um, uh, What's it called? Uh, sent detect sense DSA detect sense and avoid system. I saw more than ten years ago in the UK set up that was really really effective. Um, and the hunt footage, uh, yes, I saw that hunt footage. Uh, were people within the rights to take that footage? Or not did you see that, Bruce? Or anyone else see it? 
which footage was that? Uh, some guys uh, took some 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 pictures of the hunt hunt saboteurs, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Gorilla giant, yeah. Um, bit grey that. What, my 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 challenge would be: what if they were flying a helicopter? Would that be any different? Yeah, yeah. It's all it's, it's all a bit grey. People, yeah. It's a very tricky one that, and actually that winds back to um, the helicopter below the Phantom. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that was. Well, was that a real one? <laughs> was that a real video or was that a fake video? No, it was real. It, it, it was on the lab uh, on the specialized what? video lab by Mr. Simpson, uh, which is a recognized uh, video analyzer, <laughs> and. Uh, and Mr. Simpson captured the offending frames. Oh, uh, I didn't even notice a helicopter in that video. Gee. And uh, and um, Mr. Simpson directed his followers to pound on that uh, original video, and they did, and they did go there. The uh, come on, um, what's the size of human stupidity? Well, Bruce is here. He's the person to ask. I've, I've lost twenty kilos. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, um, yeah. The, I'm surprised it hasn't gone a lot further. That video actually, uh, it's still not not gone mad. I see it has been picked up by that lad Bible and a couple of other things that are knocking it around on Facebook, but it still hasn't got mad. It hasn't gone mad. You've got to remember that the mainstream media now are just incredibly lazy, and this it lands in their entry in the form of a press release. They won't do anything. It's like they they only they only get. They only publish what they get fed, and no one's fed it to them yet, and I'm not going to feed it to them. No, no. And uh, Gorilla Drone saying that footage from the hunt's illegal, so perhaps you'd like to elaborate on why you think um, why you think that was illegal. Um, it's in the open countryside, as Bruce said, what would it have been if it was a, an actual, I suppose it's the operating over people, perhaps. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, immediately what my thought to that would be. Uh, back in the day, I can't remember the year. I think it was like 2013, actually. We ran a story about uh, in Texas. Uh, somebody sent sent me some images. Uh, they didn't want to, to put their heads above the parapet. But it turned out to be some blood being uh, sent to a river via a pipeline from an abattoir. And that went nuts. That was one of the first big stories on SES News that went nuts. And um, the net result is, Vince and the guys were charged, and it was all very naughty and very illegal. But the net result was they changed the laws in uh, Texas so that if you found an environmental crime from the air as you were going by your normal flying around duties, you would be in trouble. <laughs> so, so they 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 they, uh, they changed the law so you can't. Uh, it wasn't quite aerial trespass, but it was it was something else. And, and anybody else that found anything environmental now there will be in trouble. So I think that's the the hunt. Which footage from the hunt? I'll have to. I can't. Um, I saw it on on Facebook, I think, um, and it was just of, of people hunting. Have you got a link to it, Bruce, at all? No, it was in the mainstream media. Someone did a story on it. That's where I saw it. Oh, oh, okay. I just saw it as a post on um, on on uh, the book of the face. And Shannon Newman, hi there indeed to you. Let's look at for drone and hunt and see if we can find it. And while we're doing that, the um, the civil aviation, uh, yeah, it was a uh, blue flyer. Civil aviation, there we are. There we are, 11 hours ago. Okay. Here we go. Was by drone. I'm showing that, and then I'll put this up here. Um, in the UK, then, what do we think of the five kilometres, the little five kilometre stubs and two nautical miles or two and a half nautical mile circles around airfields? I've seen a little bit of moaning about it, but not too much. Nothing wrong with it. I don't know. I thought, I thought they, should, they should still have a shielded operation facility for people that obviously can fly safely within that. Those, uh, but like all aviation rules, you must not do a thing unless it is safe to do so. Yeah, and I've, uh, I think uh, you know, if, if, to my mind, it should should be like all class S A S space. We just shut it down. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think they've been quite reasonable, and um, a few people have moaned that their their entire areas won't be flyable. But uh, I was surprised to see it was only one kilometre when I looked at, at sort of surveyed the entire 
uh, as many regulations as I could find. And the UK stood out. One kilometre around a, a protected airport, I mean, that, or around an airport, that's like crazy because at that one stage there in Canada, it was like nine and a half kilometres or something. And then, um, you know, it's New Zealand is four kilometres. Yeah, it's, ten, it's ten, ten, ten radius. Ten. Yeah, and ten, ten crazy. Of and this, this speaks to the issue that who's done the risk assessment? Nobody. They're just plucking figures out of their little tiny backsides because if they'd done a risk assessment, it would be consistent across the entire planet. But nobody is doing the risk assessments. They're all going, oh, we'd better make it bigger, make it safer. Yeah, and the two, two and a half nautical miles for gorilla drones, that's basically half the man's, the old mats and ats uh, rules. It's, it's, it's half the distance that so they would have been four or five. So that, that's what they seem to have done there. But what I did what I don't like is the mix, good old aviation mixed units. Let's have two 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 nautical miles or two and a half nautical miles, and then let's have five kilometers. Uh, okay, <laughs> and two thousand feet, um, and one kilometer wide. But yeah, there should we have are. just done it in cubic acres and be over with it, you know? Cubic acres, yes, I had that, but I kept rubbing the cream on, and it was all fine. Well, fine. Would you rather to be in bushels than those crazy other? Oh, you have lots what of. Does it, what does an EU member know about bushels? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Blue Fly saying, I should be able to fly my Mavic Pro below the trees. UK and he's, he's agreeing with Bruce. We, um, you need to know, um, Blue Fly, we, we actually generally discourage people agreeing with um, Bruce. You know, don't don't feed the animals, this sort of a thing. Best best not encourage Bruce. That's not the best thing. Uh, it's rumoured that Oz will get uh, shielded operations and next rules update. Uh, that's from Oz by Trone. Well, it does seem one of the most sensible ones out there, doesn't it? Um, it's pretty obvious, really. Pretty obvious. Uh, right, but acts the one comma two is just ridiculous. Okay, go to the trains. Now, what other stories? So that was Cap seventeen sixty three. And are any of us in America that are in the audience or thereabouts? Because I hope you've all got your sharpie pens out and you have now marked your airframes because that deadline has gone by. I don't know. I wonder how much ed education has. I wonder if that's actually happened. Well, they're still consulting, though, aren't they? After they've made the decision, you know, I mean, you've got to go through the process, even if it's a completely waste of time. But my my question in all of these changes to regulations are, how would this have affected any of the incidents to date? Would it have a prevented it, or b allowed the authorities to track down the offenders? And I have to say, putting the registration on the outside would have made no difference whatsoever in any of those particular incidents. So why do we have the presumption it's going to change the future? What it's going to make things better in future? It must do because we've been told to do it. It must. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. It must. Simply must. Uh, Blue Fire's got a question for Nicola. What is your next plane build, or are you focusing on finding your lost plane for now? <laughs> well, I'm uh, actually focusing on testing out stuff while uh, making occasional flights to that location to see if I would ever spot it. Um, the Ranger 2400 is still on the build table, and that is something I have yet to finalize the autopilot installation in and uh, made in uh, publish the review. And also that, oh my God, that Finwing Traveler, that plane is going to grow old and still in pieces. I and really need to build that up. And it's still, is it still the Omnibus F4 Pro is still your autopilot of choice or what's your autopilot of choice these days? If I have to, if I have to put a new one in a plane, yeah, absolutely. But right, right now, for instance, the clouds is sporting a micro APM and uh, I haven't updated it. It's still running version 3.4 which is like ancient well actually i don't think the apm has any higher versions than that no no you you have to to live with that or then get get something no 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 i'm not touching that i might change the motors but i'm not touching that you ain't doing nothing that. wrong with the kkk board d5 my friend <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are the latest and you might uh, soon get something from our friends of Team Blackship that will probably also be running uh, the... If it um, works, don't touch it. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I 100 million percent agree with that, and that's oh, what she said as well. So um, you're still running uh, CPM or MS DOS 1.1? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, if, on, if, on, if, on. If, if you set up okay. an aircraft, okay. it works. It's, it's a different. It's a different thing. A bug crashes a plane. A bug yeah. in the operating system. Really, I can give a beep. So, I find a version that works. I don't update. I don't update. Me too. No, the cloud. The cloud has been sitting on that version ever since day one. That's it. That's I'm not updating. That's how has worked. <laughs> aviation has worked like that since 1902. Don't update anything. Yeah. Everything should be 50 years old because we know that works. <laughs> that is, that is no, really. kind of true, isn't it? Apart from the small uh, memory space for logs, that flight controller has been absolutely perfect. I have, yeah. no, I have no reason to change it. I'm using it for return to home and as a stabilization and the occasional simple mission. Why the hell would I want to invest in anything else or change it if it's working flawlessly for what I want to use it? I agree. It, I agree. I think, I think it's a good idea to let other people test the cutting edge mm -hmm. versions. The thing is, if, if right now I open up a new Omnibus F4 Pro board and put it in a new plane. I am going to load the latest firmware. And if everything's working okay with that firmware, I'm not going to update it yeah. ever. And then the there's various versions of the F4 Pro, isn't there? Uh, but Bluefly has also said, have you heard of the Matic 411, F405, and 722 wing variants? Yes, Something tells me in the back of my hand, the 722 doesn't work, but Louis, no, you the 722 that. doesn't work. You need a 745 CPU uh, to, to, to work because 722 doesn't work. But um, the Matek 405 wing is quite well regarded and very stable. Uh, I don't have one, so I can't vouch for it. But from the, the feedback we have get from the uh, Ardu Pilot user community, it seems like a good choice um, and there are also a few developments because um, the guys from paparazzi the other uh, open source flight stack have now started to support the pixoc style boards uh, including the pix racer that was a commit they did a few days ago so we have more choices of um, uh, flight stacks on the Pixox style uh, boards. So we have we have Ardu Pilot, uh, PX4, and now Paparazzi joins the the, the possibilities of flight stacks. Oh, and that, that'll go on a, on on a Pixel One, will it? Yes. No, all run. Will I run Ardu Mountain? Uh, yes. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Ardu, Ardu Mountain <laughs> is a specific build. Is a specific build for for Nikolai. Yes. Well, I might have to have a go at paparazzi because paparazzi has always been just way above my pay grade, and uh, you needed uh, a university yes. to to it's, to to use it. It's not uh, your trivial cup of tea. Uh, yes, I used yeah. it a few years ago. I haven't been using, it, but. Um, and we know from the, the the competition in Australia for the Finding Joe or whatever it was called, there was teams that were using uh, the paparazzi, but uh, the results were all on uh, Ardu pilots. So, yes, but we should we, we should acknowledge that paparazzi were pretty much there first, and they've done done a very very good job um, and uh, very good group of people. Yes. And other, other things have, have spun out. Uh, Blue Fly is asking, which is easy to get grips with, i.e. less complicated, APM or INAV. Unfortunately, we're a bit biased here. Uh, <laughs> INAV rules. INAV forever. Bruce, 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 Bruce is the guy that uh, uh, theoretically is the fan of uh, uh, INAV. Uh, but he also flies FPV, so he doesn't need INAV. Yeah, I mean, that the Argy pilot thing, when you loiter, it flies in circles. I never flies in really cool patterns. 
<laughs> oh yeah that's what it's making three-dimensional pictures oh um, my it's, it's God. like that pilot that got had to fly that plane and he got bored he had to fly for three hours or something do you see that piece of yes. Uh, news yes yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic bit of aviating from that young gentleman there uh, absolutely uh <laughs> yeah, all, all of them have their quirks and all of them have their own um, things to learn. Uh, uh, and, uh, and really, it, is, it comes out to the. Oh, no, maybe they don't. Do they or not, or don't they? Don't they, Nicola? What? That was him, wasn't it? That was him that made that noise, wasn't it? Come on, hands up. Who was it? Who made that noise? What noise? No, all right then. <laughs> Pay attention, Nicola, yeah. there's a test at the end of this. There will be. There'll definitely be a test. I'm going to put you guys to test. <laughs> so I'm a bit distracted, guys. You know, muses. The muse. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned it first. Um, <laughs> so you probably saw I made a little video. Of, we're cutting down some trees. The real reason we're cutting down the trees is because they're a huge fire risk, especially the firs. And I'm going to put some indigenous trees in. But let's pretend I really am making uh, an e-vitol a port or a verti port and i discovered that oh look there's a paper from 1985 i think it was or 84 83 whatever it was um but i've got to, I've got to power the things i'm like so if, if somebody comes here i mean it's awfully rude to send them back with an empty tank how many um can you put rg pilot on an omnibus f4 blue flyer yes you can yes have you got a youtube channel gary apparently i don't know <laughs> something like that yeah <laughs> but um uh, so i haven't found have any of you guys seen you know, Bruce the sort of chat Lord, look? I haven't seen any any proper battery, full battery specs for any of these EV tools. I've been looking for them to work out the size of charger I'll need, and I can't find anything anywhere. It's probably just what? a Tesla with wings. Yeah. That would do it, wouldn't it? Well, I, I went to the Tesla website earlier and I, I turned it up to the maximum house size you could have, which is 6,000 square feet. And I said, yeah, we'll have air conditioning. Yes, we'll have EV charging. And I think it was a pool pump as well, something like that. So I've got to buy a few more things for the house. But anyway, I said we'll have all of those. And that said, I'd need five power walls to run a house of that size. And that's the biggest one the calculator would let you use. So if I double up, um, I make 10 power walls, surely there'll be enough for an EV toll when they come and visit. No, just go and get, go to um, AliExpress and get those Trustfire batteries. They're so good, Trustfire. Would you trust a battery called Trustfire? <laughs> <laughs> so, so how many, how many, how many Bruce, trust? Don't, don't, be, don't be nasty. Uh, uh, on my, some of my flashlights, I, did, I, I do use those Trustfire batteries. They, they work very well because they have the 18650 with the protection circuit embedded on the battery. So at least some models work very well. And once the LED wears out, the, the, the cell itself will light the room up. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But uh, do, you, do, you think, do you think we're not seeing the battery specifications because the battery don't exist yet? In any <sighs> form, anyone's managed to work out the power density required. Well, the Tesla car is like two and a half tons or something, and most of that's battery. Like, there's a huge three tons, and most of it's battery. So you've got to look at these EV tolls, and yes, they have the prototypes, and they take off and they land, and what's oh, wonderful, fantastic. But I think you're right, Gary. I think we are a long way from practical battery technology for flight purposes for carrying human cargo in a in a commercially viable manner. Come and on, uh, let's do let's do the maths. That's what Should I wanted we... you to do. See, excellent. I knew you'd do the work eventually. What, no, uh, Louis taking the stocks off. What's he doing? Come on, three hundred grams of vehicle flies twenty-five minutes. Okay, and this is a vertical takeoff, so three hundred yeah. grams. So even if you go not with the squares law, but on direct proportional law, uh, the amount of batteries to carry uh, those personal transportation vehicles are absolutely crazy, unless you get some crazy uh, microwave charging in the air a system that will fry every bird that crosses the, the microwave beacon. <laughs> so we'll also get uh, uh, roasted chicken, roasted uh, sparrows <laughs> in those pets. Uh, no, the people have to sort out the, 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 the energy, um, energy uh, issue 
and the the the, the rate the rate that the, the the energy can be recharged to the drones uh, so that they can be a viable thing and we've had lots of promises from lots of people um, come on uh, how many years Bruce 20 30 years ever I'm since sorry. Um, not to speak about the Phoenicians with that, uh, with those batteries on on pots, but uh, it's the problem we'll have to do, has to be faced. I'm not sure that uh, batteries are the system that will prevail in the end. Uh, we'll have to go to a, an hybrid system with some kind of. Um, system that generates electricity because electricity is very easy to 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 to, to make uh, uh, to arrive to any place on a on a vehicle so if you go petrol it's not uh, easy to to have one petrol engine on a quadcopter for instance so it's much easier to have uh, a make an hybrid system but I mean, can it be that obviously that a fool like me can quickly work out I can't have enough Teslas to do it? And if if I can quickly work it out that quick, why is the industry allowing this fluff to continue? What what why aren't why aren't grown ups shooting it down? Why are people so keen on this? BS because where people want money and, and the media is happy to spread a story like this and investors, mostly investors, are willing to take a punt just in case. And it's a whole it's a mechanism that feeds on itself. You know, you come up with this hype hype laden story and the media runs with it. And investors go, Ooh, if that works, that'll make me a lot of money. They pour money into it, which further feeds into the whole thing. It's and that's why we have crashes. That's why we have the dot com bust, you know, because people's expectations get way out of whack with reality. And at some stage when the reality isn't being delivered, people stand back and go, Oh, we've made a mistake and everything slows down and normalizes and then carries on again. I think we might even get that with the whole personal drone transport, the vertical urban transport system. Well, because if you if you quickly think about it, if you say, well, all right, well, I'm trying to trying to be a vertical takeoff and landing. So so if I just made a short takeoff and landing, a stall, and I, I had enough room, say like uh, uh, 200 meters or something, so suddenly all the, all the um, all the numbers would just make a you could make a lot more sense you could come on yes, that, that has a, a huge problem gary you're forgetting it's the not invented by me or not invented here a syndrome so you have to come up with something new and that that thing that you're proposing uh, has more than 100 years and <laughs> yes. so I, I think we should all just travel by trebuchet Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's, it would be be very exciting. For a very Another short. example of this is is Elon Musk's Hyperloop. I don't know if you've watched a, a UK physicist called Thunderfoot. He's got a YouTube channel. If you've watched any of his stuff, and a whole lot of people, including others, have debunked this whole Hyperloop thing um, and how it is so utterly and totally impractical it, and effectively almost defies the laws of physics. And it's not something new. And Elon Musk saying, oh, you know, I should patent this and give it to the public. No, because it was invented in the 1930s, the old pneumatic tube system. And they, they yes. proposed using that to carry vehicles and so forth. Elon Musk come along, put a shiny new label on it, called it his own. And he's going to change the trans face of transport on the planet. But he's not, because it's just so impractical. And by the way, from someone that had to do maintenance on those pneumatic systems on a big supermarket, when one of those containers opens and all the money spreads out on the piping, <laughs> it's a complete mess, guys. You have <laughs> hours. With the Hyperloop, it'd be smeary, peopley stuff all over the inside. Peopley oh stuff. My God. That's, that's hours and hours stuff. <laughs> uh, of uh, taking, trying to, to, to take all the money from the inside the, the piping system. It was painless. So, yes, the idea might be practical in terms of materials and equipment that has to be used to sustain the, the partial vacuum of the system. Uh, yes, it's doable. Of course, it's doable. It's just a matter of costs. Uh, so, and the maintenance, and even on a small surface like what, five, uh, one point, uh, around one kilometer of uh, pneumatic piping, it was a royal pain in the back 
to do have that thing completely uh, flaw uh, working flawlessly. Uh, it was used, it, yes. It gets worse with the Hyperloop because they're talking about hundreds of miles or thousands of miles of Hyperloop um, network. And just the thermal coefficient of expansion for steel means that the whole thing grows by a kilometre or something in a hot day. And where does that extra length go? Because you can't have oh. sliding joints because maintaining oh, the steel becomes impossible. God. Oh, Bruce, you don't believe in, in science and material science. that, But... That will come up. Uh, someone will come up with a smart idea, and th those things of keeping the vacuum on expanding joints, it's already been solved. It's not cheap, but it has already been solved. And if they are smart, they won't be, uh, they won't need to keep a vacuum on that, on the entire length of the system. So they can do it by sections. Uh, technically, yes, it's possible. Uh, not an easy solution, uh, no. But technically, you could do it. Um, okay, uh, will it be cost effective? Okay, then we start um, to, to, to do some uh, good math, get some crazy Excel jockeys and start doing the maths. Mm. So the bottom line is, I'm gonna struggle here in my rural location to um, have enough elastic trickery uh, for EV tolls to come and visit me. Um, but we might get away with some sort of hybrid thing. And or if we put a runway in, <laughs> just call me old fashioned, call me a fool. Uh, it seems like a runway would be the way to go. What's what's your current car, uh, 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 Gary? Oh, it's a horrible old Volkswagen. Okay. Diesel. Diesel. Uh, if you get the top of the line BMW, I believe the cross is the same as an R22. Why yeah. don't you get an R22? Oh, yeah. Well, yes. Well, yes. And for, yeah, I can. I'm also licensed to fly them. So that's also handy, isn't it? Um, yes. An R22 would be, um, would be a solution. A, it's a solution. Oh. Yes. It's not a solution for everybody. And the thing is, I want to be able to read the, the paper and not be not having to interact with the thing as it whisks me a few kilometers to the. <laughs> yeah. No, the, Very. I, so you have a nice crash. solution for that. Yes. You have a nice solution that it's not a, it's not called an auto autopilot. It's called a chauffeur. Yeah. So well, we, we can't all be like Bruce, you know. Not all of us can live the the Bruce lifestyle. Uh, it's not for everybody that. But yeah, no, yeah, I do hear what you say. Yeah, there's, there's a whole load of weirdness, isn't there, to all of this? Um, uh, Boo, uh, Bob Boo said it's a Ponzi scheme in the um, in the comments and the landing is a problem. Um, Twenty two yeah. over cheap, but a pixel can it? Well, that's exactly what uh, uh, drone delivery Canada did with that little mosquito helicopter this last week. Just released it as a big uh, delivery drone, hasn't it? And it, it, it does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? At the end of the day, um, to to repurpose exit aircraft that already exist. Um, but yeah, I, I I love the idea of the EV tolls. I love I love the the popular mechanics idea of it all. But it, will it really ever work? I I just don't know. Um, if you Why want... can't we just use a Falcon Nine Heavy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I go I... straight up, come straight down. No well, problems. Reusable. Well, I... I just need to flatten a bit more. Well, actually, no. We we got the dam just here. We could put the pontoon down there. There's a Falcon Nine Heavy also. Um, I don't know. Well, the Falcon Nine does, but yeah, that's what you need. It's just a little. Put your drone boat in the in the lagoon. You're done. Yeah, yeah job done. Job done. Brilliant. That's what I'll do. So that's what I will build next. Then <laughs> it's yeah. I, I don't know. I, I worry about all these these things that are coming about. Uh, well, what else? What else could we talk about, gentlemen? By the way, uh, for all that uh, power that you'll need, all those six <laughs> Tesla walls. How many square acres of solar oh, panels would you need? And I know uh, the calculator is not there for that. Uh, that would have been more. Well, I was hoping you'd tell me that you inspect the things, don't you? Oh um, no! I, starting from Monday, I won't ever be expecting the wind turbines. So, if you get a two meg a two megawatt wind turbine, you you'll be safe. You'll just have to, and you just have to to make a dam on your lake and pump the water up so that you can have power at night but so, but tesla make those solar roof shingles don't they they're yes, solar roof tiles that's all you need a couple of those two or three of those i think no, no. no. 
solar panels on the Hyperloop. Absolutely, yeah, it's indeed. It's dark though, isn't it? In there, <laughs> um, yeah. You have an acre, an acre of uh, 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 yeah area roof, not a roof, no, <laughs> not a roof, an acre of roof. Uh, but well, yes, I'm afraid the slope that we live on faces the setting sun, so we probably would only be able to fly in the afternoon then. Yep. Oh, question for Bruce and a good one. What happened to the FPV Pulse jet? Hashtag yet another back from the dead, we hope. It's it's still sitting out here, just waiting to be flown. We, we've had, actually, the weather has not been very good. I've been, you know, like it's been winter for the last week, and we haven't had that many in the way of calm days. It's been quite a an annoying summer i think at the moment the uk is getting much better weather than we are it's really annoying mm, mm. Uh, but did you so did you solve the melting the the plane issues that you had with that it's not, no it's not melting no that's not the problem it's the high thrust line was pushing the nose down so i figured that i will i've got other people to launch it but they all throw like sissies so next time <laughs> i'm going to give it a really good hit <laughs> oh that old rc brown oh no no receivers browned out oh no they throw like a sissy yeah the classic excuses there bruce the classic excuses <laughs> shame man all right what's the time look it's coming up to the hour did anyone else see anything else oh uh, something to to kill the the for against what uh the the proponents of fpv like bruce and uh, i was seeing that uh, uh, helicopter video we were mentioning uh, a while ago and i was thinking that's a blow for not for the the recreational pilots but for the fpvers because he was looking at the monitor we know that people should have um, should have a, an, an observator or a companion but uh, that is a risk for the fpv crowds uh, though if the, those videos come around more often because apparently yeah, interesting the guy... though louis interesting though because the, obviously the helicopter pilot never saw the drone or there would have been an incident report in the media it would have been all over it so um if you are saying that uh, oh, it's dangerous because the drone pilot couldn't see their helicopter then you must equally say it's dangerous because the helicopter pilot couldn't see the drone and if you look at the incident or accident statistics the fatalities there have been an infinite number more in collisions between manned aircraft than <coughs> between manned aircraft and drones resulting in death so if you're flying in a cessna 172 sitting right at the front in the seat you cannot hear a thing because you've got this noisy motor you can't see down you've got the cowling you've got the floor you can't see up behind you because there's a wing you can't see up there there's a wing there's a wing um, you have less situational awareness in a cessna 172 than you do when you're flying fpv so if they want to say all fpv pilots must have spotters then all 172 pilots must have someone sitting in the passenger seat whose sole responsibility is to keep an eye out for other aircraft and helicopters i was thinking on a dome like the bombers on world war ii uh, a dome uh, on top of the plane <laughs> now but with guns is, with guns so we can continue shooting drones down that's it <laughs> uh no but the thing is can those kinds of incidents be um, affecting more the fpv uh, side of the, the the drone flying even though that we know that the law requires a a, a spotter it's just high yeah the the interesting thing is that the guy heard the helicopter so he looked up but it was too late according to the stuff that was all you know on the on the video um and as i say the, your prime my primary source of collision avoidance when i'm flying fpv are my ears i can hear things coming i can hear people if there's people in the area you know and i think the problem that he had he was flying too high if he'd been flying lower um, you know around the trees he wouldn't have had a problem with the helicopter how yeah. high is too high bruce um, any higher than you'd like to fall yeah okay. <laughs> it depends i mean I'll, we do have a law that says you can't go above 400 feet in most countries and i think that should be strictly enforced uh, unless you get special authority and no attempts to to do otherwise but again i think we really have to have this no ga below that 500 foot level if we did that then all these collision problems would disappear okay, the, the okay. exclusion zone around airports <laughs> exclusion zones around airports GA above five above 2k Gary says but above 500 maybe even above a thousand now because that that lower airspace is getting really congested with drones so we've got to think safety not what's convenient but what's safe and if you're going to go for safety over convenience you put GA up at a thousand feet and then 
the risks to both all parties involved drops dramatically. But it's not about risk, is it? Because if it was about risk, that would have been done already. It's all about appeasing certain groups that have got a lot of power and a lot of um, influence. That's why we have the problems we have. I mean, I hate it when regulators and politicians say, we're doing this because of safety, and it's nothing at all to do with the fact that I had a holiday to Hawaii paid for by this company. Um, I think you know that, that there should always be a risk assessment before any regulation is passed. And with drones, we haven't had risk assessments. Therefore, you cannot expect good regulation if you haven't identified and quantified the risks so as you can come up with a a workable mitigation strategy. We're not doing that. We're just doing anything because it's better than nothing. And we've just taken such a slapdash approach to regulating all this stuff. It's no wonder there are problems. That's my rant. Yeah, well, re reactive rather than proactive, isn't it? Oh, the, the industry's not stood up and, and, and done the stuff. Uh, and the comments people are talking about spotters, they're talking about airspace and common frequencies and. Uh, yeah, but the, 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 the net result is uh, our friends. Um, from Altitude Angel, when they, when they come on, they, they talk about the simulations that they've run of putting thousands of aircraft across London and trying to make them hit each other. <laughs> and they can't. <laughs> so, but, but they can get helicopters to hit pubs. They were, yes, that was in Scotland. Yes, they and can. And the pub's a big non moving object. <laughs> Yeah, well, Shane. That, I mean, at the, but at the end of the day, that 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 uh, helicopter operator was doing what he should, what any any pilot would do if they have an incident uh, at night is they go to a dark spot. Uh, you know, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna ditch a thing, you're gonna ditch it in a dark spot. That's the best. That's the best you can try and do uh, in in those circumstances. Uh, there was a Tarakan. Did he run out of fuel? I can't remember what the reason for that was. Uh, no, but but again, it shows the point that people keep talking about. Oh, you know, these drones are dangerous, but every time you replace a manned operation with an unmanned operation, you're potentially saving lives. So why aren't we placing more emphasis on this rather than working out ways to keep these man unmanned aircraft out of the way of the important manned aircraft? Now let's get rid of the manned aircraft for everything other than passenger travel and the world will be a safer place. Yeah, absolutely. I did see, I can't remember which group it was on the book of the face standing up and saying, hey, isn't it time we, we lawyered up? And got, got got some PR and loyal, loyally people into this to to try and change the message properly but i think we've been ranting about that for three years now haven't we <laughs> it's something like that <laughs> come on uh, the only company uh, in the world that uh, has enough muscle to do that at the moment is our three leather friends from shenzhen yeah 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 they, well they, they could have a they have better a, want to rock the boat no, they, 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 you know, they, but Louis, one question remains unanswered. Now that you are, are leaving your current position, is it true that you are starting up as an aerial Uber driver? <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Still undetermined. Cannot share the Vital uh, tail sitter, uh, whatever uh, I'll be going to do next. Uh, don't know yet. But there's, a, there's um, I was again, I was thinking back to the EVO sort and the man thing. Well, that's that's this part of the man thing because we, we really that is too much power. But there's definitely a sweet spot for the size of, of, of delivery for uh, drone deliveries and, and stuff like that. You could definitely power something, something efficient here. So, I think personally, I think we'll see ev tolls manned uber air and if you look at the uber specs if you go through all their details of what they want i think it was something like must have a minimum cruise speed of 160 kilometers an hour or something like that so it's not only just the the, the hovering and no, all the no, other no. stuff if you add in all the other stuff it's like oh my Come God. On. Uh, for a three four meter plane uh wingspan plane 160 k is, is not much it's easily doable like our nikolai friend can can attest and vouch to that and he looks at uh, when i say his name at 160 case he says yes uh but you put um, people on board something that can hover and try <laughs> you put four people on something and try and get to 160 k's an hour easily well yes you so, can do it for sure you can do it but not for long yeah, so but, this means that louis is going to have to go back to being an escort for a while before he becomes the uber driver <laughs> I, I i heard that's a job he never gave up you know it's, yeah. it's too good yeah. to, too good to you know the disappointment if he were to stop uh, just just now uh have to, to get some rest and start looking at uh, some options that are already uh, on the horizon 
and Chris in the comments makes a fair point. You do it, you can do it falling. <laughs> yes, you can do speeds falling, and then wait until 3D airspace congestion reaches the level of 2D surface space. Uh, and of course, that's the job of air traffic controllers is to uh, to put all the aircraft into airway so they increase the chance of of hitting each other. Otherwise, why on earth do we need air traffic controllers? Um, you know. Because then they'll stop and bang. Uh, it's the for, for uh, the, the problem on on airspace is the same problem we have with autonomous cars. While we have humans in the loop, we have a problem. The moment we have a fully autonomous road, then uh, airspace won't be a problem too. So, if you get just get rid the of the roads, wheel, right? No, yeah. if you get if you get if you get the roads clear of people driving. Uh, the amounts of accidents would would be less than it is now, uh, even at the current rate of the best uh, autopilot systems. So mm -hmm. just put it up and raise the levels and get the, the an helicopter uh, not allowing the pilot to do to fly wherever he wants. Put the airplane not allowing the pilot. Not I'm not saying that we should go. Helicopter and airplane and men. Uh, we so isn't that what Airbus does? A nanny, a nanny on the airplanes and helicopters that would prevent the human operator to, to do mistakes. Yeah, but that's Airbus's philosophy, and that hasn't worked out so well for them in some cases. Um, okay, given given the the thousands slash millions of hours of uh, operations. I wouldn't say it is a bad a bad situation where they are now. As long as your airspeed indicator and your attitude sensors don't fail, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's been largely a problem with the other manufacturer, though, hasn't it? I can't. There's the one with think, 348 coming yeah. across from Brazil, wasn't there? The Embraer? Um, the Embraer, guys? Yeah. Yeah, the Embraer and... But uh, the Boeings have been the biggest PETO problem ones, haven't they? Yeah. It was that Air New Zealand, I think that was an Airbus, that um, oh, yeah. off the coast of France or Germany or somewhere where they, they just returned it after a lease and someone had painted over the um, the airspeed indicator, or airspeed sensor or something, and, and so it fell out of the sky. Start yeah. again, again, human intervention on something that should be done by a machine. Yes, yeah, that is. We, we praise our 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 robot overlords. Thank you. We absolutely do. Yes, yes. I for one welcome our robot overlords. <laughs> absolutely. Look on that note. That's probably the right note to go, and we should probably actually have to say that every week because uh, you know they'll they will be watching this back one day. Um, so before we go, does anyone else have anything else? Go in once. Going oh, twice. Oh, 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 but wait. There's oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> just just for, for those that are not that are not as as uh, uh, stuck to, to, to old versions of uh, firmware, please go and test the new Ardu pilot plane uh, beta version. Uh, full of goodies for all the long range flyers. Uh, that does no it have better. mountain avoidance? Mountain avoidance mode. <laughs> mountain avoidance <laughs> mode. <laughs> because those mountains just they they come up so quickly. Jesus. And 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 um, return and and smart return to um to to all the the the, the uh, uh, low flyers. Actually, return to home in these situations is something that was discussed uh, with other people, and you know what? Speed Lab, the autopilot, do, ha do have that return to home mode that the plane just uh, spins up until it reaches in a very tight circle until it reaches a uh, predefined altitude. So I don't think that return to home behavior is that insane. But for an the the day, and I find it a lot. I find it a lot, a lot simpler than having to load up terrain following that da data into the autopilot. It's it's automatic. You don't have to do anything, Nikolai. Oh come on! What about yeah, but you have to plan, a you, have to, you, you have to yeah. plan. Backtracking on, would work because yeah, you, you have yeah. Backtracking would work, but you have you're going to fly back into 
range or something at some stage, aren't you? Yeah. But you, yeah. but you've still, but, you've still, you've still got to have room to make the turn wherever you are. No, nothing, nothing works if you haven't got room. Reverse to Immelman. Turn. Reverse Immelman. Well, that's all you need. Well, uh, like a climb spiral is about the tightest thing you can do, rather than backtrack. So it might save your ass. And besides. It's automatic. You'd have to run a mission through that mountain to have that data. It doesn't otherwise load in. It does. If you, it does. If you, oh, we've got a mission. You're right. I see what you're saying. You are just going out flying. And uh, if if you uh, if you if your ground control station was connected to the web, then you would have pulled that data. But that's well, not if you if you're running telemetry, which I'm not. Ah, uh, yeah, you were just uh, but also if you don't hit the mountain also works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's why it needs to have like a multitude of failsafe behaviors and you just program whatever you want prior to yes. flight, depending on what you're gonna be doing. And having like a spiral climb as fast as because that functionality is actually already in Audio Pilot. They just need to need a few lines of code to move it also as a fail-safe behavior, not only as loiter and you tell it, go up 100 meters, go down 100 meters, because that's what it actually does. You tell it the radius of the loiter and then you tell it, go up one kilometer, go down one kilometer. It's the same thing. The code is there. It just needs to be used in a better way. Well, I look forward yes. to you putting yes. it in and we will call it mountain mode in your honor. That's yes. Very uh, fine. Uh, uh, please, viewers, come back next week when we'll get another episode of Where is <laughs> Nicholas? <Where is, laughs> that's right. Where is that plane? <laughs> Shame. I'll, I, might put a, I might put a link into here to one of my similar indiscretions. Might do a I few flights. Yeah, might do a and few Nicola. flights with the clouds if I get a chance over the next few days. And yes. when you're flying over snow, please paint your model a different color than white. <laughs> yes. Yes. And and similarly, a big field of sheep if you're in New Zealand. That's probably why Bruce doesn't have uh, have, have white aircraft. All right. Look, this is this is I'm definitely got into nonsense mode. Uh, dear viewer, thank you very much wherever you've been in the world uh, for watching. Uh, Osprey Drone, we need to attack Australia a lot more. We'll, we'll try harder. Uh, it puts them up. So there's, it can be it's like spot the ball exactly. That's what that's what we were thinking last week, Matt. I'll see. Have a lovely week, uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, if you're flying on the weekend, enjoy that, and I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday at 2100 GMT. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Cheers, guys.